This video is titled Mobile Antennas. Most HF mobile antennas use some kind of coil. Some of them are base loaded with the coil at the bottom and some are center loaded with the coil in the middle. It's antennas which determine the lowest common denominator in any installation. Here are nine don'ts that will remove maximum efficiency. One, don't buy antennas that attach with a clip, lip, or mag mount. Two, don't buy any antenna with a large metal end cap. Three, don't buy an antenna with a coil larger than four inches. Four, don't buy any antenna with a coil turns per inch greater than 10. Five, don't buy any antenna with a coil wound with anything smaller than number 14 and preferably number 12 or better yet, number 10. Six, don't buy any antenna with a whip under 36 inches long. Seven, if you just have to have 160 meters, here's something to keep in mind. Inductive reactants nearly five times that required of 80 meters. Eight, Sturdiness doesn't count. One of the best ways to maximize efficiency is to install a large capacitance hat at the very top of the mast, typically three to four feet long. Nine, be leery of antennas advertised to cover 80 through six meters, or worse, 160 through six meters. Very few amateurs realize how important overall length is. Radiation resistance is based on electrical length and how the RF current flows over that length. A full-size quarter wave antenna has radiation resistance of 36 ohms. If we have the length, one eighth wave, the radiation resistance drops to nine ohms. Have it again, one sixteenth wave, and the radiation resistance is just two ohms. If the resistive losses were fixed at 10 ohms, Simple math will tell you the efficiency rating. The calculated efficiency would be 22%, 2%, and just over 1% respectively, assuming there were no other losses present. There will be, of course, because the shorter overall length, the larger the loading coil inductance has to be. So let's get to the meat and potatoes. Short and stubby, HF antennas seemingly have become all the rage. Their popularity in part due to their small size, typically less than 7 feet overall. Lightweight, apparent ease of mounting, and spousal approval rating. But the story on stubby antennas is, in fact, these are the least efficient HF mobile antennas that you can buy. Its mechanical and electrical aspects are also questionable, as is its operating methodology. There are about 75 different manufacturers of screwdriver antennas. Some copy, some improve on the basic idea, some are just marketed a little better. Quality-wise, remote-controlled antennas run the gamut from poor to excellent, and price isn't always an indicator. Further, they all come in several different overall lengths and power ratings. The advantage of a screwdriver antenna is its typical 9 to 11 foot whip. There are a bunch of swirly wound antennas on the market. Some are fairly good, others aren't worth the effort. All swirly wound antennas are low in efficiency. Their cues are about 50 or less. A few of the 80 meter models have cues of less than 10. If you really want a lossy antenna, use one with a stubby three foot long whip. Their only attribute is lightweight and low wind load, which means that they can attach to any type of mount. Efficiency ranges between 0.3% and 20%, and they typically don't need matching networks as the system losses bring the impedance down to near 50 ohms. Monoband antennas are limited in so many ways. They're not really a wise first choice. There are a few varieties of monoband antennas still out there, but not a whole lot of choice in the marketplace nowadays. One manufacturer has a spider that you can make a monoband antenna into a multiband antenna. Monoband antennas, due to their construction, are very hard to tune in the field. Bug catcher antennas are big, ugly, and have fallen out of favor, perhaps for obvious reasons. Besides being big, they're ugly, cumbersome, costly, a nemesis to tune, have excessive wind load. They can, however, be the most efficient of the mobile antennas if they're mounted correctly and the correct size coil is selected. The whip typically used for a bug catcher is a 102 inch standard CB whip. Coil diameters vary from 3 inch to 8 inch. Some caution should be exercised when selecting a loading coil. As a large larger loading coil does not necessarily mean a higher Q than a smaller one. Just for the record, it is all but impossible to achieve a loading coil Q of over 350. 
There are also other varieties of mobile antennas in the marketplace today, but these are the major ones. So is there a perfect mobile antenna for HF? Not really. Every single mobile antenna out there has its downfalls and its low efficiency. So should we give up on HF Mobile? No, I don't think so. HF Mobile can be a lot of fun. You just got to realize the deck you're playing with. So have fun running HF Mobile and we'll catch you on the band. Seven threes from N9LVS.